Hi, this is Justin Gordon. I'm extremely excited that you're excited to learn about React on Rails. I'm going to first tell you a little bit about how React on Rails came into existence and what it's all about. And I'm going to go through a quick example of going through the tutorial. I'll try to make this quick so it doesn't take much of your time and then you can dig into the meat of it on your own. So here's the GitHub um, repository React on Rails and it's got everything you need here, a lot of documentation, etc. So how did this all get started? Well, a while back, I wanted to integrate React inside of a Rails project. So the first place I looked was React-Rails. By the way, I'm not going to tell you about why you should use React with Ruby on Rails or why you should use React, etc. I'm going to assume you've already made that choice. You want to use React and modern JavaScript with the Rails app. In any case, I went and tried to make React Rails work. Well, React Rails, that gem is based on using the asset pipeline. So, I don't know how many of you have been out there and tried to incorporate um, gems that have JavaScript code into your asset pipeline. It's a real hassle because sometimes the gems aren't updated. It just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So then I started digging around and a few people told me, hey, you should check out Webpack. Well, long story short, that led to the creation of this article. And I got definitely got a lot of um, a lot of attention on this article because this article talked about how you could do Rails with Webpack and the ES6 transpiler. Back in 2014, there really was no easy way to um, use the ES6 transpiler. And that was becoming a really big thing back at the time. Nowadays, it's pretty standard, except if you're using the ACID pipeline, you might not be using ES6 yet. By the way, if you're coming from CoffeeScript, what ES6 does is ex 6 turns your JavaScript that is a super modern form of JavaScript into JavaScript that any browser can understand. It's a little like the CoffeeScript compiler. So after getting frustrated with trying to figure out how to make modern JavaScript work inside of using the React Rails gem, because really it was all about the ACID pipeline, I decided to learn about Webpack and give that a go. Well, after putting this system together, I wrote a very detailed article about how to do this and why you really want to use Webpack and get really on board with JavaScript. So I've wrote a little bit about here about what's wrong with copying all this JavaScript um, into your vendor assets JavaScript. Well, if any of you have done that, this requires no explanation. It's a real hassle. Imagine if you're putting all your Ruby code all the Ruby gems into your GitHub project. It'd be awful, terrible to maintain. In any case, I really advocate people get off the CoffeeScript bandwagon and get off the gem bandwagon for using JavaScript and front-end development and really get on board using the NPM package manager, using ES6, not CoffeeScript, using um, proper modules that you get with modern JavaScript bundling systems. Once you do all that, you know, I say you're a first class citizen of the JavaScript world. You're not going to be going through this stuff and going, oh, how do I figure out how to make this work with Rails? Nope. You're going to be using JavaScript like a pro. So definitely my motivation for getting into this at first was React. And then, of course, you know, that came along with ES6 after I decided, hey, I'm not going to do CoffeeScript anymore. So I figured out how to make this all work. And the way it worked was that Webpack was the secret sauce here, is Webpack takes all your JavaScript and all your other front-end assets and makes a very nice one or multiple JavaScript files, maybe even like a CSS file, etc., and then we'll fit that all into Rails. So that takes actually a lot of work of a lot of what the asset pipeline gives you. And well, We'll still keep around the asset pipeline to keep things simple for our Rails integration, but we're going to use Webpack to generate just a couple files we throw in the asset pipeline and then call it done. So all of a sudden, once you got all that stuff to work, you, there's a whole world of NPM packages that you can start integrating in your Rails projects. I just thought that that was so cool that no longer was I looking at Ruby gems for, well, where is this, um, where is this gem? So how does this work is that you got a gem file well that puts in um, you know that creates your gems in your project and if you have a you know for um, npm type modules you're going to go and you're going to use a package json file you run npm install and you get node modules 
Um, blah, blah, blah. Here's some stuff on why NPM and not Bauer. That was actually relevant in 2014. Nowadays, pretty much is on. Everybody's on NPM. So then I figured out how, okay, so I'm going to do Webpack plus Rails. And, you know, how am I going to make it work? I wrote this detailed article about all this stuff. You know, here's what you do here. Make this directory, make this directory, make this directory. Do all this stuff. And cool, it's thoroughly detailed. I know a lot of different projects use this article. They set up their configuration to use Rails with Webpack and React. Cool, all that stuff works. So here's what happens when we set this up. And this is, remember, this is before React on Rails, was that you'd have a, um, skip the hot stuff for right now, this um, live reloading stuff, but you have this Webpack Rails config, you run Webpack-W, you create a JavaScript file, and that goes in your asset pipeline. Okay, pretty simple. Basically take like 100 different JavaScript files, make one nice file, put in your asset pipeline, good to go. Well, of course, there's, you know, there's a few extra details in that. Here's a bunch of other details here to make this work. Yeah, you, know, you can skim through this article, but to be honest with you, you really don't need to read this whole article because now we've got the React on Rails gem. Now, why did we, um, so what happened? So what motivated me to actually go from just having this article to making the gem? Well, true story, what happened is this, is that a guy, Blaine Hatab, he was, he made an article that compared the different ways of integrating React with Ruby on Rails. And he mentioned my article, but he said that it was kind of a hassle because, you know, he would do the Webpack way that I'm doing, except the React Rails gem supports server rendering. Hmm, server rendering. I never actually needed to do that or figured out what that was, but I've heard about that. So maybe I should look into that. Well, so I looked into it. I figured I took a look actually at what the React Rails gem was doing for server rendering. I go, you know what? I'm up for this challenge. I'm going to create a gem. I'm going to enable it to do server rendering. Well, it turned into a lot more than just doing server rendering because I figured what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it really easy to integrate React with Webpack and Rails and make it so you don't need, um, you know, make it so it's just a recipe and it's just easy to do. So I decided I was up for the challenge. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to make a gem so we can do some of the stuff that React Rails does with server rendering and what React Rails does with the asset pipeline. I'm going to see if I can make a gem that does this using Webpack. Well, let's see how this goes. Well, it's gone pretty well in the sense of we are now almost at 2,000 stars, hopefully above 2,000 stars by the time you read this. So, Server rendering, that was the first goal. Let me figure out how to do server rendering. And then I realized that, you know what? I wanna make everything super easy. So, and um, early this year, I created this article, the React on Rails Doctrine, where basically I kind of mentioned all this stuff that we're doing with React on Rails. So I wanted to make React on Rails work so that it's super easy to integrate React Webpack and Ruby on Rails and really fit into the whole Rails philosophy of optimizing for programmer happiness. DHH wrote an article um, called, David wrote this article called The Rails Doctrine. And I thought this was pretty cool about what are the, you know, what are the key parts for making, um, you know, what are the driving principles for, uh, for Ruby on Rails. And so I wrote this article, how we fit into this, you know, how we optimize for programmer happiness, um, convention over configuration. This is huge in the JavaScript land world because there's just so many different ways to do things. It's much, um, much different than the Ruby on Rails world. We also pick out a whole bunch of our favorite libraries for you. We make it really easy. And there's a few more things in there. I encourage you to read this article. Hi, this is Justin. Thank you so much for watching the first video in my three-part series about React on Rails. You've just seen some of the motivations behind React on Rails. The next video is going to go over the React on Rails basic tutorial. That goes through a few simple steps. You're up and running with the React on Rails app in no time. And this could be on top of your existing application. The third video of the series, I'm going to go through the code that we generate with the generator. I want to remind you, if you have any questions or comments at all about this work that we're doing with React on Rails and our other open source at Shaka Code, please, get in, please check out our website at shakacode.com, and please don't hesitate to get in touch. We'd love to help you out with your project. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.